really bad shit that happened to me and how actually to like still survive, keep on going and, and stay positive. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today is a slight hangover day, but really just a slight one. As you know, yesterday I went to that art exhibition thing, connecting with people, drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking. So I think I will today not head over to the studio. It doesn't make any sense. The weather was really bad, so no real activity. I will just sit here and take care of a lot of business kind of things. And also just chill, relax a little bit with Vanessa. And we got today a giveaway, this Olympus Field Recorder, another one of these. And all you have to do to win it, we will ship this worldwide, is actually listening to my Who Are We song and counting how many times in the song you can hear Who Are We. And then leave that number down below in the comments. Everyone that got it right has a chance to win this and do some field recording. I mean, it's fun for some ambient stuff and and yeah, that's basically it. So today I, I went to the kitchen and like in the kitchen, I have like these shopping bags um, and there is like one with a logo on it from a label I used to work with. Like I released just one single song on that label and had a whole lot of trouble. So today's story is about like all of the really bad shit that happened to me and how actually to like still survive, keep on going and, and stay positive. Cause that's usually the hardest. So yeah, that label probably, did I already know Vanessa? I don't think so. So it's like more than eight, nine years ago, I released a song. Oh no, actually I, yeah, we were in Berlin, so it's probably just five years ago, maybe six. I made a song called Walking Down the Line with a singer and songwriter from Berlin. Oh, I'm actually not allowed to say that, I think. So um, I made a song. <laughs> it's up to you to figure out what it was called. But I, I made a song with a singer and songwriter in Berlin and it got released on on a label by a person that was first very friendly i signed a contract with him his label which stated that the song will be split 50 50 like all of the the revenue the song entered the beatport top 30 i think for for i think indie a new dance and later on it was re-released with a couple of remixes and went up to i think it's now at 1.2 million plays on spotify which is quite a lot. That's like 6,000 euros split in half. So 3,000 for me, but this guy actually never paid. Every half year I asked him for a statement, didn't pay, didn't send a statement. And then after two years and threatening him with a lawyer, he sent me a statement. Years later, we figured out that the statement was fake because I just called his distributor and they sent me the real one and he he changed numbers like he went in there and faked it in a very stupid way like very obvious got again a lawyer tried to sue him he still refused to pay and said it's such a long time he doesn't need to pay but we still got at least like two-thirds of the money back from him which wasn't really worth it but i was just angry and and just like did it to punish him. Very annoying situation, frustrated me a lot, costed me at least like half a year of, of my nerves, but I definitely learned a lesson from that not to, to release with other labels, because he's not the only one doing shit like that. Other labels do the same, even bigger labels. They either don't send statements, um, which, which can happen. Sometimes you have to ask and then they send it immediately. Um, it sometimes also happens, happens to me that I forget it. But if someone asks, usually within a week, they get their statements. If I already got my statements from the distributor. 
there are a lot of people involved, all of them screwing up, so it sometimes takes a little longer. But from that, I learned to start my own label and release my music on my label and have full control and this way not getting screwed, which was a lesson I maybe needed to learn to take that step. Because starting your own label is a lot of work, a lot of responsibility, a lot of money that you have to put into it, a lot of time you have to put into it. And I'm... I don't want to say lazy, but you all know that if there's like a big project ahead or you're thinking about the next steps, you sometimes hesitate and you actually take longer to do it. And once you did it, you ask yourself, why didn't I do it earlier? So if you have any plans, ideas, just go ahead, do it straight away. Don't wait. Every second you wait, you will regret. And these bad experience kind of pushed me into or forced me actually to to do my own label there was no other option so i did it and now we are very very close to one year of accents music and it's it's been great like i've released i think eight of my own tracks 30 35 songs by by other people which is like great being in a position to even help other young producers to just have their first release or second release try to promote it, push it, um, send it to Spotify and just, just see what happens. We got some really successful songs. Some songs didn't perform that well. As I already explained to you yesterday, it's, it's really up to the algorithm and uh, the quality of the song. But we definitely make sure to give the songs like this initial push to have a higher chance. So if you're interested to send in demos, it's all linked down below in the description. Let's get to another really bad experience. And that was actually with my management. I worked with them an entire year. It's all like here on this channel from signing the contract with them. Okay guys, I'm now finished with the meeting and look what I got. To getting out again of the contract. Yes! Best phone call of my life. I can't tell you what it was. I can't right now. Which was... Yeah, probably the most intense and, and most annoying because my entire life was on the line, at least like my, my career, which is very, very important for me, making music. And I worked with them for a year. And within that year, yeah, they didn't really do anything where I was actually thinking a management should do it. So for example, proactively getting in contact with people, with labels, sending them my demos, using their private contacts that they build up over the years. They didn't do anything of that. And also like trying to find singer and songwriters for my songs, nothing. Even just answering to the emails that I received, which was their job by contract, they didn't always do. So an entire year I lost my entire time, my entire productions, because I was I was relying on them. I was thinking there's someone in the background taking care of all of this, trusted them, but they didn't do anything. And then you realize like, like what was it like maybe 10 months later that it that they didn't really do anything and you're kind of way worse off than before. I have to say um, getting out of the contract again was actually fun because my lawyer told me the easiest option is to just annoy them as much as you can until they don't want to work with you again because a management contract was usually for like three, four, five years plus um, sunset um, rules. That means even if you don't work with the management anymore, the next two or three years they get still a percentage without doing anything it's it's less it's usually like 20 percent is like the base level and then the year later it's maybe 15 and then 10 and then five and then you're 100 percent not any more involved with them i got out of the contract without any of this but just annoying them. I called every day, why didn't you do that and that and that and that? Why is this email not answered? Why didn't you contact this person? I really annoyed them as much as I could. And then they just said, um, I think we should stop working together because it seems like it, it just doesn't work. But this was all planned like and, and kind of fun, but also stressful, but also fun. And the second I got out of the contract, I started my own label. The second I got out of the contract, I started managing myself. And this is now, is it a year? No, it's more than a year, one and a half years actually. And within those one and a half years, I went from the smallest studio ever to 
biggest studio ever. We got all of that crazy equipment. I can afford to pay my rent, to go on vacation, to um, employ people, to help other people. Got a little bit more time as well now with people helping me. So it's been definitely the right decision. But without these bad things happening to me, I would have never actually gotten to this point where I'm right now. I've learned that, that things do not really work out at least not for me, maybe it was just like unlucky, maybe other people have, have more luck and work with people that actually do what they promise. But this really pushed me to, to do my own and to take care of the things myself. And ever since I'm doing that, I'm way, way, way better off. Like really the year with the management, I earned in that entire year, I think like 450 euros. That's all they ever got me was like one, one gig. Um, which is like basically nothing. That's not even paying rent for this place. And now the DJ school is working. We have courses, people renting a studio, the label is working, Leonard taking care of the label management. So I'm, I'm still heavily involved in it, but like um, uploading the songs, talking to the distributor with Spotify, he's doing all of that. And I can focus again way more on music. I have now four or five songs already which I didn't have last year because like moving the studio and building up the label. So I want to focus 100% for the rest of the year just on making music and advancing as much as possible as a producer. So I basically out of those bad experience made kind of everything myself, built that up, which took me like one and a half years now. And now I have like the foundation ready to just keep on steady releasing and, and see what happens. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, let me know in the comments like your bad experiences in the music industry and what you did. If you also then started to just do it yourself or if you then moved away to someone else and worked with them together. And um, don't forget, of course, the giveaway. Who are we? How many times in my new song? Leave it in the comments for a chance to win one of these. And we will see us tomorrow back again, another vlog back in the studio and even more giveaways. I will do now a giveaway almost every day. We got more dance fair tickets and a little bit of equipment and software and some extra special things, but more on that tomorrow. So sign up.